Hello, my name is Jim Caviezel, the actor who played Jesus in the movie The Passion of the Christ. I'm here to tell you about the Hollow app. It's an amazing app for prayer, meditation, music, audio Bible. Hello, everybody. We're going to get started here in just a few more. Let's see, in about Hello, two more minutes. My name is Jim Caviezel, the actor who played Jesus in the movie The Passion of the Christ. Okay. I'm here to what tell you heck? about the Hollow app. It's an amazing app. There we go. Okay, let's have a little bit of a different setup tonight, just so that I can keep keep up with um, the chat windows better. I'm trying something a little bit different. Come on now. Okay. <clears throat> We'll see how this works. <laughs> what I'm doing, I found as well. And here we go. Okay, so it is one more minute. We're in countdown mode and we're going to get started. For, for this feature Friday, I have my little hat on tonight. It is is blizzarding outside it is so cold everybody right now it's with the wind below zero i'm not kidding earlier today it was 34 below zero it is seriously dangerously cold outside wind you can hear the winds roaring outside so far power has stayed on and we have two more days of below zero weather before it finally begins to warm up just a little bit on Christmas Day. Oh my gosh. Interesting, interesting time here. So, let me try one more thing here because this is not doing what I've got. I've got this on my phone and I've never do... Um, YouTube or anything like that to watch on my phone. So this is new for me. Let me see here. That will just not go away for whatever reason. Okay. So I'm not going to pay much attention to that. <laughs> I will watch over here on my big monitor for chat. I'll have to play with that some more off camera. But we're going to get started, everybody. Hi, Karen. Hi, hi, Jacqueline. Oh, Jacqueline, I know. Livingston, Texas, it never, I saw it's like in the teens down around Dallas, like 15. So what is it down there in Livingston? For those of you that don't know, Livingston is kind of north, a little northeast of Houston. That is very cold for Livingston, Texas. Oh my goodness. Hi, Mark. Oh, totally. The bed warmers are on. Quilts and the fake fur blankets are on the bed. And it, in this old house, built in 1881, so if you've never lived in a, an old house, a really old house, <clears throat> If you've ever heard the term drafty old house, yeah. <laughs> it's better than it was last year because Mike has went and did a lot of caulking and 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 wind and winterizing for this winter, but boy howdy with these high winds, wind gusts up to fifty miles an hour, everybody. The actual air temp outside right now is two below zero. So with the wind chills, it is ranging from 25 to 35 below zero here where I'm at. Ooh-wee. That being said, oh my gosh, I have to tell you something too, everyone. For all day long, I thought it was Thursday. And then while I was having lunch upstairs, I looked at my phone and it said it was Friday the 23rd. I thought, oh, I have to go live tonight. <laughs> For whatever reason, I thought it was all day long. I thought it was, I thought it was Thursday, and it's really actually Friday. So, two more days to Christmas, and I have to tell you, the cold weather is so bad 
that even my little dog Puffin, <laughs> he is using potty pads inside the house because it's too cold. We we try we got him outside twice because we've been. It started early yesterday morning. The the bad weather here did and. <laughs> he's he's been out twice. He's peed outside once, but he's been using his potty pads to do his business indoors, not going out for walks. <laughs> oh my goodness, twenty eight in South Carolina, Patty. That is cold, frigidly cold for South Carolina as well. Crazy weather, everyone. Crazy weather. <clears throat> Let me get some more of my coffee here. Okay, so what I've got sitting right here in front of me. Now, I'm going to swap my camera over, but before I do that, I'm going to show you what I'm going to be working on tonight. So this is Sashiko Fun Day, and I'm going to start doing a weekly live on the Sashiko, everybody. If you don't know what the Sashiko is, it's a machine made by Baby Lock and it does one stitch, but it does that one stitch crazy good and well. So, let me swap my camera. Before I do that, this is the project I am working on and I'll be working on the Sashiko until it's done. It'll take several episodes, but this is a Hoffman panel right here. And I am going to embellish and quilt this thing and like there's no tomorrow so it can go up on the wall. But the cool thing about this, it's perfect. Let me hold that up again here. There we go. But there is what we are working on to begin our first series on the Sashiko machine. Now, if you would like to attend one of my in-person Sashiko events, the next one on the book is in March at, De at um, Decorative Threads in Warren in Shelby Township, Michigan. Sarah, if you're listening, howdy. <laughs> I got to get a hold of you, by the way. And we'll be doing a lot of fun stuff on a two-day workshop on the Sashiko in Michigan in March. And I will give more information about that here soon. So what I'm going to do, I have, this is a, a quilt sandwich. And I've done some outlining on one of my long arms that I use. And I'm going to do a lot more on the Sashiko is what I've decided. Because I'm going to do a lot of embellishing and thread painting. Instead of just simple outlining stitches and that kind of fun. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to swap my camera so you can see what I'm doing. Hold on. There we go. And what I'm doing, I'm getting, I'm going to pick one of these trees here. And I think I'm going to do, you can't look at, for something like this, you have to do it and focus on one thing, one item, and then do it really well. I'm going to do this, the major tree trunk is what the first thing I'm going to work on. I will do the cardinals. I'm going to save those for last. But this big tree trunk right here, let me just back this camera up a little bit. Oops, wrong way. There we go. Here's this big, there's the top. And down here is the bottom. This is what I'm working on tonight. Now, what this machine does, it does one stitch but it does it exceedingly well. There are some of the stitches on it. It does a stitch. Sashiko is a type of stitching in Japan, but here in, this, here in America, this is what we call, it looks just like hand quilting. To look at this, you would swear this is all hand sewn, but it's not. It's done on this machine right here. It's the only stitch this machine does. Only Baby Lock has this machine. They have the patent on it. Now, that being said, there is what I would call the, the top side of the fabric. On the back, it looks like straight stitches. Okay? 
front. Check that out. I'd love to use variegated thread. That's just a little patch I've sewn on after it was quilted. And what's really cool about this, everyone, there's so many different techniques. I have some of my little samples here I'm going to show you. Check this out. <clears throat> here is some yarn that I stitched down and see if I don't know if you can see that or not because this is really fluffy yarn. One of my other samples, you'll be able to see it better. But this is silk ribbon right here where my finger's at and that was just woven around the thread. There is no upper thread in this machine, just bobbin thread. Do you can see that stitching there? You have the circles. I did that on the machine. There's a way to set up the machine so it's almost like free motion. Not true free motion, but you can make wonderful curves, which is what this area right here is. You can see the curves in it. This, this next sample, you can see the curves even better. Check it out. This is some of my hand spun yarn that I've woven into it in between the stitches. Pretty cool. And once again, on the back, it just straight, looks like straight stitches. This is also one of the most secure stitches any machine can make, simply because each time the machine makes a stitch, the needle is a latch hook type of needle in the machine, and it has a latch hook wire, so the needle has two parts to it. But what happens is the needle goes down, and it pulls up the bobbin thread, it makes a space, and then goes back down and forms a knot. And that's how it creates this, this Sasha Co hand-looking type of quilting stitch. Now, that being said, you can adjust the length of the stitch. Let's see, right over this way. There we go. My hand's in the way. There we go. So, <clears throat> right here, closest to the edge, you can make a 5 millimeter stitch, which is what this is. Or that little tiny stitch, that's a two millimeter stitch. You can also set up how much space is between each stitch. This I did at three, the large stitch, three millimeter. And this tiny little stitching, which would be the smallest in between my fingers here. That's the smallest stitch it will make. That's a two millimeter length and a two millimeter space. Pretty cool. And look at this, you can also do heirloom ruching, smocking. When you do that, look at that, it looks like you've hand stitched that smocking down by hand. It's amazing. Pretty cool. Totally cool. Okay, so all of that being said, what I'm going to do first, I have... I have some Aurifil thread in my bobbin, and it is this right here. Let me set my little samples to the side. So what I'm going to be using right now, this is a black and white variegated by Aurifil. It's a 50 weight thread. That's what I have in my bobbin case. And this is what I'm going to do my stitching with. I'm going to outline this massive tree. That's this would be like a focus, a focal point on this. Of secondary to all of the cardinals, this is what would appear closest to you if you're looking at a painting or a photograph. This trunk has a scale that's the closest to you to your face. So <clears throat> The way I basted this, I just used some of these really cool little pins here. Check these out, love these things. These are wonder pins made by Clover. And they're, they're a safety pin, but they're super, super easy to close. Great for quilting because you don't need a tool to remove these or to attach them. 
super easy to use. But that's the only thing I basted with. I do not use spray basting. That stuff, you don't want that near your machines, everybody. Whether you're doing embroidery, quilting, whatever, don't use spray adhesive. It's not a good thing for your machine. Okay, so we're going to get started. Let me check these. Um, let me check the chat window here before we move on. Oh, wow, the uh, eastern New Mexico, it's 24 there also. Goodness. Hi, Linda. Yeah, the, the, the Solaris has a different type of looking stitch. They call it a Sashiko stitch, but it is not the same thing as what this machine does. You do not have to own one of these machines to come to the class. There will be machines there for people. If you don't have the machine, there will be one there for you to use. Okay. So, and seating will be limited, so the faster you sign up, the more easier it is for anyone to secure a spot in that. So, what I'm going to do, I am going to outline this big tree, and as I'm making a line, I will cut the thread and show, give you a close-up as we go along of it. Get my other window back up here. There we go. And I'm going to zoom in. There we go. Angle it over this way a little bit. Back it up just a hair. There we go. Now you can see what I'm doing. Now here's the needle. And you'll see it pull up a loop of thread. Every time it pulls up a loop, when it finishes that stitch, it creates a knot. These, you don't have to back stitch with this machine because each stitch design right here, oops, hold on, right here, this trunk comes over some of the roots on this, so I will not stitch across that. I will break my thread right there and, and pick it back up over here. So, all that being said, we're going to get started. Okay. And I'm going to start it right at the edge of this printed fabric. And once when I finish this line and I pull it back out for you all to see it, you're going to know exactly what I'm talking about, everybody. Okay. And let me move one more thing out of my way. There we go. Perfect. Oh, Beth, six in Denver. That's, you know what? You're warmer in Denver than we are here. <laughs> Woohoo. Okay. So I'm going to lay down my first line of stitching. I am going to set my stitch length at three with the spacing of three, just because I can. There we go. And it's really important if you're going to quilt a large piece of fabric or work on a large piece of fabric that, that the way that that fabric is supported simply because <clears throat> if it has drag you want the machine you don't want to pull it through or anything like that you the machine should feed the fabric all on its own you're just guiding it is all that you're doing I'm following that curve I just touched a button so it would stop and needle down. There we go. Now I'm going to raise my needle up and I'm ready to break a thread. But what I can do, instead of breaking a thread, I can trim it with my scissors later. 
have my needle up, I have not cut my thread, I'm going to drag it across the area I want to skip, and then I will pick it back up on the other side. it. Ooh, it's looking nice. Mooey mooey. Okay, so I'm going to move. Let's see. Let me see if my handheld camera is working. Hold on. No, it is not working for some reason. That's okay. And I'm going to come back up, up to here. And I will, I will cut my thread at this point once I get back up to that other tree overlay. And you'll get a look at what you can see what this looks like. Now all I'm doing by, you see me moving my hands like that, I'm just guiding the fabric because I'm trying to stay on top of that line as best as I can. There we go. Now I'm just going to raise it and I'm going to pull the thread to the back of the machine. Then there's a, a notch right here. That's how you cut it. And by doing that, you never want to cut it with scissors. You always have to use this cutter because that keeps your bobbin thread under tension. So when you go to, to start off another line of stitching, it will make, it will, it will form a stitch that thread has to be under tension for this to form a proper stitch. Okay, so this I'm going to pull this up and let everybody get a look at this stitching here. I'm going to move my coffee cup before I do a something really bad <laughs> we don't want that but I'm gonna let that focus in right here is where I've been stitching right along the edge of this trunk here we go see I started right up here by the right here and went this way there we go there we go, to right there that I skipped over that and went on this way and let outline that little tree root right there. See that? Okay, so, and when I skipped, there's no thread on the top of it where I skipped it, but there is on the back, right here is where I, I just dragged it across and see that loop of thread under my finger? So right there is the actual stitching from the back side. I gotta get my other little handheld camera working because that's just not, it's making it harder for y'all to see what I'm doing for my close-up shots. Let's see here. Get this up. Come here, you. Okay. Okay. Then <clears throat> let me have a look at my other camera here for just a second. I want to get that up so y'all can get it's easier to show you all what I am doing here. I tell you all the wires I have in here, it's a wonder these cameras even work sometimes, I'm telling you. <clears throat> okay. Did you come unplugged? No, you did not. Funny thing, it was... Let me see if I can refresh the camera. Uh, 
There we go. I think that may have done it. Hold on. Okay. Why is it not showing up there? Interesting. So I'm just going to have to leave that alone for now or it'll interrupt the whole stream. But um, let's go here to this. I'm just going to back this one up a little bit. There we go. And I should be able to just show you with this one here now. Okay. So what I'm going to do next, <clears throat> I'm wanting to get the outside outlining done on this, this piece, this area that I'm working on. So there's the big truck, okay? Now, when I get into the center here, I'm going to add texture by applying different types of cording and yarn to it. So what I'm going to do is <clears throat> go up here to the top, and I'm going to stitch outline this other side of it here, okay? <clears throat> Okay. And here we go. Now, you can look, a lot of people think this machine is just for quilting, but it's not. Because you can also Anything a straight stitch machine can do, the Sashiko can do. But instead of using a regular straight stitch, you're using this heirloom looking hand stitching. You can make garments with it, home decor, bags. You can even piece, I've shown in previous videos that you can even piece, if you're a quilter, you can piece your quilt tops using this machine. There's that done. Then I'm going to break my thread, I think. Do I want to break my thread? Do I want to break my thread? Yeah, I'm going to skip down to here. Right there. I stitched right there, so there's a little area right here I need to stitch. Outline. <coughs> Okay, then I'm going to go around his tail feathers. I don't get my scarf caught up under there and get it sewn into it. Yeah, I've done that before, everybody. <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> Not. <laughs> okay. Now, I do do do. Am I going to break my thread now? No, I'm not. I'm going to skip over here to the other side and I while I'm here, I'm trying to reduce the amount of having to take the fabric all the way out of the machine as much as possible. Just saves a lot of time. There we go. Get a little bit of progress made here and we'll get some close ups of it for you. Okay. 
And do do do. Let me think here for just a second. I found two. This this is where I'm going to break my thread. Here we go. And since I broke the thread, I tried to get you a better look. So what I've done here, I can just show you. I've got it done up here at the top, all the way down the outline of this tree. This whole side now is outlined on this side of this tree. When I came to right here, okay, I skipped over to here then went down this side for this second tree and then broke my thread down here. <clears throat> and then when I go get ready to trim, I'll have threads on the back to trim. And I'll just put a dot of fray check where I trim a thread and it'll be good. It'll all be golden. So now I'm going to outline the other side of the big branch and then we can start adding some texture to it. <clears throat> There, going to look good. Now there's no brown in these tree trunks. This is a winter scene. So <clears throat> I'll show you some, I went up to the, where my weaving loom is and I grabbed a few weaving bobbins. It has some yarn and cording and stuff on it. It'll kind of match, it'll help blend in with the colors that are in this panel. Because <clears throat> if you've ever in the past done anything like paint by numbers, think of these panels as a way. You can do this on a regular sewing machine also, but these panels act as a background and gives you an idea of where to add other color and texture and what color of threads or embellishment cording or yarns to use and it just gives you it gives you a starting point for you to make it your own creation okay I know those of you that have tuned in I want to thank you very much for following me and us have been able to meet online and have these these fun sessions together and if you have to go before I'm done tonight have a wonderful Merry Christmas it's only two days away the holiday tomorrow's Christmas Eve oh my gosh and boy howdy has it not been it's been a fun year hasn't it it's been a and I don't mean that in a negative way or anything like that, but it's been an interesting year. Ooh-wee. And I'm sure the coming year will be equally as... equally as fun and or challenging or however you want to look at it. But, you know, that's, that's life. You know, it'll be fun. We're going to have a lot of fun together in the coming year. Okay. That's all. There isn't hardly, no little side tracks or anything for this line of stitching. There's a long, it's a long line, which is always fun make stuff go really well. Let's see, that comes all the way down to here. That root, this root that I'm outlining. It's a big one. <laughs> here we go. And here's the thing, you can change threads as much as you want to to get the effect that you're after. It just, it's just a totally different way 
to do thread painting and all that kind of fun stuff. Okay, right here is where I'm going to break my thread. Okay. There we go. Now then, I'm going to show you how to apply yarn to add texture to this. Totally will not be able to get this entire tree front done tonight. That's for sure. But I just want to show you the process. And then you could do this with any panel. Oh, thank you, Linda. Thank you. So, what I told you, I have a weaving loom upstairs and so I went upstairs and got a bunch of my grays. These are bobbins that fit in the shuttles for my weaving loom. Let me just back this up a little bit more. Oops, wrong way. There we go. <laughs> okay. So th these are just all, and these all will really will go with all the background colors really well for this particular piece. So there's just like, this is a merino blend of wool. And here is some highly textured. This is Italian wool. It's got a little boucle fuzziness to it. And another one <clears throat> here, more charcoal colored. But I'm going to add texture to my tree trunks using this, this type of stuff. This has silk, silk and wool in it. It's another charcoal-y colored one here. This is black silk. This is 100% silk, it's very strong. Is that the silk one? Nope, that's not the silk, that was something else. That was alpaca, is what that was. That's why it broke as easy as it did. I thought I had one wound, but no. This is the silk I'll be using on it. This is 100% silk, and it is very strong. If I pull out a little bit, it's a very fine, uh, spun, but check out, now I'm putting pressure on it, finally it broke, but yeah, that is some strong stuff right there, that silk is one of the strongest threads or yarns that you can get, and it's super soft also, but anyway, that's another color I'll add in there, this is a fun one, this has kind of thick and thin areas in it, it's all in different shades of silver and grays. That's the same thing, just a larger bobbin of it. That's a, um, a gray alpaca right here. And then this is just a wool boucle. It has the little, little loops on the yarn. <clears throat> okay, so all that being said, <laughs> I'm going to use some of this first. This is a very, has a lot of, um, has all the colors of the tree trunks and the backgrounds in this particular panel. Put all that out of the way. Ooh, and what I'm going to do, I'm going to start at the top. And I'm not going to keep, I am going to make the line jagged as it comes down. I'm not going to do perfect straight lines because... I might even cross over in some places in this process for this truck simply because <clears throat> if you think of tree bark, if you look at tree bark, it, it's all broken up in like odd shapes and interwoven together and all of those things. So this is what I'm going to use. I'm going to start with this and I'm just going to take off of my little bobbin here. I'm going to take off about two yards of it. I'm going to snip it. And then I'm going to double it and get the two ends together. Okay, the line is where that middle fold is after I line up the two ends right there, like that. Okay. Then I'm going to get my quilt sandwich back underneath here. I'm going to get my piece, get it under the needle. Come here, you. There we go. And 
I'm just going to start it right there because why not, right? I'm going to start it. I don't want to start it exactly in the middle. I want it offset to a certain extent. Now for this, I'm going to put this, the machine in specialty mode. So it will only make, even if I hold down the foot control, it will only make one full stitch at a time. Okay. There we go. Now, we'll loosen that up to three. Now I'm going to put this loop of thread in behind this needle. The needle is down in the fabric. Yeah. You know, and I can trim it off at any time. It doesn't have to be exact, exact, exact. But then I'm just going to cross it. So the the that loop of yarn is in behind the needle, and now I just cross both ends right in front of the needle. And I'm going to take a stitch. I'm going to lengthen that stitch. I got the length set to five, the spacing to three. And then I'm going to cross them again in front of it, not pulling it tight. Okay. Then I'm just going to keep crossing and making a stitch. And the technique I'm doing right now, let me show you one of my little samples here. That one, it is right here. That gold metallic thread right here, that's how I did that. What I'm doing, I'm, cr I'm crossing them like you would a shoelace right in front of the needle. The needle makes a stitch over where it's crossed at and it secures it, but it adds some really cool texture to a project. Okay. And what I have to be careful of, if I let this just sit down in my lap, it's gonna add enough weight there that it doesn't wanna feed through the machine. So that's why I'm keeping it up on me so that as I make these stitches, it feeds through the machine. Here we go. Pretty cool. Now just increase the spacing to five also. So <clears throat> you can adjust your stitch length and stitch spacing length throughout the whole, pro it doesn't always have to stay the same. And by doing so, it actually makes it look more handmade, more hand stitched if the stitches, every stitch in a line is not a uniform size. Hope that makes sense. I know where the weight's coming from. It's from this corner right here. So I'm going to push that up there like so. There we go. Now it should feed a little bit better. There we go. Oh yes, that's much better. As you can see, it's just a lot of fun. This is not something you get done very fast because and that's the way it should be. This is a specialty machine for specialty techniques that no other machine can do. Okay. Take a peek at it. Oh, that looks so cool. You'll get to look here once I decide to end this somewhere. <laughs> I'm not going to go all the way to the bottom. Eventually, I will start edging, at, I will start working it out to the outside edge from where I'm at. Okay. Let's try that. Okay. 
and yes, you'll be able to see the, the stitching, actual stitching threads. So that's another design element you can think of is the thread in your bobbin can act as a secondary design element for this. And what I'm going to do now, I'm going to rotate it and go back out to the outer edge. So what I'm going to do, it's going to kind of form a V, for lack of a better word. Okay. Have the needle in the down position. Okay. Right here where I'm running my finger, that's where I just put that stitching in. Let's see if this will pick it up. Oop, there we go. See there? There's that yarn I just added to it. Right there. Pretty cool. Let's just back it up a little bit now. Right there. Now I'm just going to angle this one and just kind of come over come over this way. <clears throat> I'm just going to kind of randomly take both of my yarn my cording or yarn together. I'm just going to move it over to the left and take a stitch. And then I'm going to move them both together to the right and make a stitch. And I'm just going to cross them back and forth that way. Pretty cool, right? But this is totally a technique that's not, it is not a rushed technique. This is something you will take your time with when you make something with this machine. But you know what? It is so worth it because the effects are something that no other machine does. And it's just, if you've ever done any type of hand um, work, you'll really appreciate this machine. So I'm getting ready to cut my bobbin thread. I'm just gonna leave like a two inch tail out here at the end. Because when I finish this, this will here will get trimmed off. So it's always best when possible to start and stop at the edge of your piece. So I'm going to bring my needle back to the up position, raise my foot. I'm just going to pull this out out of the back and trim it. Now then. Hopefully I can position this right there. Oops, right over there. There we go. There you see it. There's my yarn I just applied to the surface of my piece. Isn't that cool? You could use embroidery thread if you wanted to. We you know a lot of us we have embroidery machines. So you could just wind a bobbin of your whatever brand of embroidery thread you have and use it to do this also. It you're not limited to any type of thread, but you cannot put anything heavier than a 30 weight thread through the hook of this machine. What the thread I have in it right now is 50 weight. <clears throat> 30 weight, 40 weight, 50 weight, 60 weight, they will all go through here. I generally don't put anything finer than a 50 weight thread in, just because I want to be able to see those stitches. You can see those right out here along the edge, just the stitching itself. Pretty cool, right? But that's how I'm going to texturize this tree trunk, just by repeating that process. Now, I'm going to 
what I did notice <clears throat> when I flipped it around back this way and started stitching out to the edge I can tell you that <clears throat> Yeah, I really made a difference with the weight of this. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to push it back away from the edge of the table. So now <clears throat> I have more space right here to my heavy quilt on. You move my camera a little bit. And I think that will help with it because this was getting some drag on it as I was stitching. And I think that's really going to help 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 this machine this piece so now I'm just gonna go over here and I have these pieces left that I had cut I could just use one piece and I'll show you how I would do that just to use one piece to make something finer, a smaller embellish, a smaller embellishment. Instead of having it doubled, I'm just going to use it as a single. But I'm still going to do this. <clears throat> Put it in specialty mode. I'm going to bring a piece doubled underneath it, like I started the first one I just did, that first line. So what I want to do, <clears throat> I want to get this underneath my back of my foot <coughs> and bring up this loop to the back of the machine. Then I'm going to cross it in front and take a stitch. I'm going to bring my little tail back around it and make one more cross. Now that's secure, I'm going to let go of my little tail and leave it at the back. And now all I have, to, all I'll work with is this, is this single piece right here. And it's doing the left to right sweeping motion. <clears throat> and by adjusting the length of the stitch, can give it a completely different look as opposed to, this is the longest stitch I have it set up for right now it's five length five spacing <clears throat> get that up there here we go The only you do have to oil this machine, but you only do it <clears throat> once a day. Every day, every time you sit down to this machine, you put one drop of oil in the bobbing case. Because this is like a mechanical machine, it's metal against metal where it forms the stitch. I'm going to angle it back down towards my right. Make sure I leave me enough yarn to get back to an outer edge. And I'm not going to make it solid like embroidery. I'm just wanting to add some texture to it, everybody. Okay, now I'm going to come back up the other way. There we go.
And if you like this technique, try it on your sewing machine and set up your, your thread for a, a stitch, for a straight stitch that's at least four to five millimeters in length. And try it on that and see what you think. It's a good way to try out the technique if, even if you don't have this machine. You can still do a faux version of it using <clears throat> your sewing machine. Just going to come back out here to the edge. There we go. Okay. And we'll trim you. All righty. Yeah, it's starting to look more like tree bark. I was just going to add some nice texture and some different. Let's get that up there. You can see that. There we go. There we go. So I have four lines across here now. Pretty cool. Okay, I'm reading the chat window. Hi, Jackie. Let me see here. Absolutely. <clears throat> so I'm just going to trim off the super long tail. The super long. I'm not going to trim it even. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to leave about an inch, inch and a half. There we go. And in case I keep a little empty can beside each one of my machines. Tea bags came in this can. But I'd leave it by my machine because guess where I put all my thread clippings and stuff at? So if you're using a large trash can, it's so much easier just to have a small can by your machine. And I remember my mother had this can. It was beautiful. I remember the tea she bought in it, actually. So, yeah, it's a nice little memory piece to have by your machine while you're sewing. Okay, so that being said, now... <clears throat> that actually looks pretty good. I like how it looks. It's coming together. And like I said, it's going to take some time to do. Just this one tree truck will probably take, oh, I don't know, a good two to three hours. So before the next episode, I'm going to be working on this tree truck that I started tonight. And then I'll finish it on camera, the trunk, and we'll move on to another area. Okay. There we go. I bet you can see all my stitches right here, too. <clears throat> so you can actually also, everybody, another thing. I don't want to put, I'm not going to apply this to my quilt. That's a long piece of cording I had there in my little basket. But you see this thread, this, this metallic braiding in this piece sample right here? Check that out. This is what it looks like. There it is. It's, a, it's not round. It's kind of like a flat metallic braid, but it's really great for that. This is also great for bobbin work. <clears throat> if you're into that, it makes a wonderful thing to do bobbin work with, but yes. I do have some metallic cording that are in these colors. I think I have one cone 
one spool of a bl of a gray and silver metallic <coughs> it will probably look nice in this and I could use for highlights some other things I will use in it this is Shetland wool and it's kind of like an oatmeal oatmeal-y off-white color and I use this in my spinning and weaving but see how that would look on there let me put it up here where the camera is hitting it there we go for some highlights there's that this is a bluish gray tinsel it's an it's a plant fiber right here it's really fine but this could look really cool in it as well this is some black Shetland I mean this is coal black this is black black as you can see that would actually look pretty good in there just kind of throwing out some colors that I'm probably going to be using in this another one this is a cool little blend right here let's see here if I can find the end of it it's always the hard part this is a very there we go this is a, a um, it's a wool <clears throat> mix and it's got white and gray and black in it let me see if I can get this in my hand so the camera will pick it up oops hold on there there we go. You can kind of see how that's texturized, the texture of it. There we go. This would look, I think this would look really cool in it too, to add some different color dimensions and texture to that tree, those tree trunks. <coughs> Excuse me. As with this one, this is a gray boucle. And most of these that I'm showing you are wool and silk. That would really go in well there. Would also go well in this sky area back here. Like right here. It's really a good color match. Okay. And I have tons more of these of these weaving <clears throat> this stuff that I use to weave with upstairs where the weaving looms are okay pretty cool get some of this taken back up here clean up my mess oops <laughs> And I will be having long arm videos finally. Woohoo, it's almost ready. The room is for that. It's something we've been working on really diligently to get prepped. So I'll be ha you'll be having seen a lot of new long arm videos. And I'll be going over a ton of different types of techniques and stuff for long arms. Okay. Let me go back to my other camera. Let's see here. We'll go. Where are we going to go? There you are. Okay. Hello there. Behind me is my Losing My Marbles quilt top I completed. And boy, howdy, this was a. This was a lot of fun. I love making this. And this is going to be beautiful quilted up. I'll be quilting that on camera, everyone. You'll get to see how I do that. <clears throat> Excuse me. But yes, so are there any questions? So everyone, I want you all to 
to have a really happy holiday and spend some quality time with your family and friends. I will be back on here tomorrow. I haven't decided what I'm going to do yet, but yeah, <clears throat> now that we are housebound because of the weather, totally I will be back on here tomorrow, everybody, working on something a little different. <laughs> Let's see, what is it I got? Anyway, I will see you all tomorrow. Have a wonderful rest of your evening. Stay warm, stay safe. Don't get out if you don't have to, if you're in the area where the, the blizzard weather is at, because it's, it's really dangerous. You could very quickly suffer from frostbite. Have a wonderful evening.